Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it so you don't have to. How was your weekend? Good? Ours involved a meteorite crashing into Earth. When we went to inspect, it emitted a radioactive beam of death, consuming every molecule of our bodies. Soon we discovered it gave us super abilities we never had before, as weird sciency beams do. I could summon explosions at will. Tamara developed superhuman strength. And Malcolm had the ability to turn anything into a video game character. With these new abilities, we gave ourselves new identities. The Pixelator. The Clobber River. Sparky Sparky Boom Man. Together, we are the adequately impressive three. And with our newfound abilities, we know exactly what we need to do. Sit around and watch Daredevil on Netflix. You'll embarrass me in front of her! Uh, don't you think you should do something with your abilities? We are! I'm touching my abilities right now! Ooh, I can do that! But don't you feel you have a responsibility to these powers? It's cool, babe. Malcolm's been whoring us out to the press. Just a brief reminder, we're still amazing, even though we've done very little with our amazingness. Malcolm, how do you respond to people saying that your powers are nothing but a cheap ripoff of the new Adam Sandler movie? Oh, well. Wow! But don't you feel like you should be doing something important? Nah, if Fantastic Four has taught us anything, it's that we don't need to. What is it about the Fantastic Four that can't catch a break in terms of movies? I mean, granted, the new one hasn't come out yet, but... It's gonna suck. It really is. Mm, probably, yeah. pretty much. I mean, all right, anything's possible, but if it's anything like this incarnation, you shouldn't be too hopeful. This film is poorly written, poorly executed, and worst of all, there's little to no superheroing in it. They mostly just sit around, be jackasses, and admire how cool their powers are. So I figure we do the same. You know, just because a multi-million dollar film did it, doesn't mean you should do it. He's right. We shouldn't just sit here on our fat asses. We should sit here on our fat asses and review the stinker. Oh, what the Christ. Welcome! Fantastic Four, now! Uh, in a second. Hey, hey, hey! A little something for the lady? Oh. The film starts off with two scientists named Reed and Ben, played by Young Griffin and Michael Chiklis, who wish to get funding to study a cosmic storm that could change the way we look at DNA. Their one problem? They're asking a guy named Doom. Yeah, that's really his name, Victor Von Doom, which translates out to Victor of Doom. I mean, okay, a rose by any other name, but that fucking name is Doom. Same old Reed, always stretching, reaching for the stars. But hey, don't let his label tip you off. Let the giant menacing statue hiding in the shadows during meetings and the fact that he stole your former girlfriend tip you off. Seriously, his name is Von Doom! This isn't gonna be a problem, is it? Oh, not at all. Jessica Alba plays Susan Storm, the director of genetic research. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't get through that without laughing. I'm surprised I made it that far. And I'll sign over a fair percentage of any applications. Number 75. 25% of a billion is enough to keep the lights on for a while, isn't it? No, oh, excuse me. I was just riding in my Bowser's Dungeon elevator courtesy of the not-criminal genius who stole my girlfriend. His name is Dome! As far as crew, I was hoping Ben could pilot the mission. So, they all have to train to be astronauts. Better get started on those years and years or minutes and minutes of training. A few days in space. It'll be great. What's the worst that can happen? Did, did everyone just forget that space is space? Remember my brother Johnny? But it's okay. As long as they have a determined pilot on their hands. Insert fucking beautiful, obviously not qualified specimen number five, Johnny, played by Chris Evans. You meet me at 401 at the top of the mountain. This is yours. Oh, that's mine. I'm sorry. How the fuck does choosing the crew for this work again? Too ugly. Mm. Oh, too average. Mm. Too bald. Mm. Too wrinkly. Mm. Too, too normal. normal. Wait, what about these guys? These are the people we need to be getting into space. But those are just glamour magazines. They're perfect. Call them immediately. All right. Except for this one. It's research. Mm. 
And by the way, yeah, it is strange that Chris Evans is playing a Marvel superhero when he's also playing one in Captain America. But honestly, I always just assumed this was Loki in disguise. You have to admit, they are pretty similar. I don't know whether I should be flying or doing Swan Lake in these suits. I mean, who the hell came up with these? Victor did. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Victor did. I'm sure he told you it was for advanced breasticulation research. Wow. Fantastic. Material made from self-regulating unstable molecules. As a director of genetic research, I'm very insulted you didn't notice my rack. So they go to their space station that... Honest to God is making Austin Powers look credible. As our own Dr. Evil and Seven of Fine are having a moment. Susan, every man dreams he'll meet a woman he can give the world to. Wow, I'm only mildly amused by this. Victor, I... I have four words. The cloud is accelerating. We've got minutes until it hits, not hours. That storm is deadly. We need to abort. Get a grip, Reed. We didn't come all this way to lose our nerve at the first glitch. That is to say, you didn't. I apparently came here to blow a billion dollar proposal on a woman who doesn't even find the universe interesting. Now if you'll excuse me, there's a bucket about to be filled with my tears waiting for me. Threshold in T minus nine minutes. So, what they apparently had the technology to know years in advance was coming, suddenly can only tell them nine minutes ahead of time that it showed up early. But hey, that billion dollar technology isn't anything compared to just looking to the fucking left. I ain't done arranging your flowers yet, Egghead. Ben, turn around. Oh what, that giant flaming death going blah wah wah wah? Yeah, don't know how I missed that. This is our attempt at trying to make sense of our power. We're not buying it either. They get back to Earth at first only noticing the slightest of differences. I'm liking the grandpa look. Oh, yeah, side effects may include slight white hair and terrifyingly inhuman stretching. But hey, at least you now look 120th closer to how the original character is supposed to look. How's she doing? Stable and her vitals are strong. Unfortunately, we couldn't do anything about her acting. But they eventually find out that superpowers are starting to emerge, but only during situation fitting dialogue. It's nice to be seen. Oh, you're hot. Why, thank you, so are you. Look at me. I can't. You're on fire! Thanks, you're pretty good too! Yeah! And he was frozen in ice and thawed out years later. Come on, I'm trying to tie them together somehow. Reed also discovers he can turn his hand into Woody the Cowboy's hand. Boy, these effects did not age well. We discover also that Ben has gone through a really bad transformation, but it's all good because they operate on Ninja Turtle logic. So a trench coat and hat apparently covers it all up. Damn, it's me. It's still me. It was the accident. Let, let me explain. No, no, don't touch me! No. Dabs! Yeah, I'm pressing charges on account of you being a pop rock. Oh yeah, Ben. A few days in space. It'll be great. What's the worst that could happen? Okay, will you stop acting like space is a fucking road trip? It's goddamn space! But it looks like a man is about to commit suicide right next to him. What are the odds? Fantastic Four, bringing peace and harmony wherever they go. Yeah, and the Man of Steel saved Metropolis. And in yet another coincidence, the rest of the team happens to be right on the bridge. What do we do now? We're not gonna get past these guys. But you could. Sue, your clothes, lose them. Really? Because I think we could just tell them that we know the guy. No, you need to strip. Couldn't you just stretch over them rather easily? No, you need to strip. They can clearly see what I'm doing. I don't even think strip, it would even- Strip, damn it, strip! You're half naked and everything else you do, just fucking strip! Oh god, I thought we were Marvel and not DC. But whoops, I guess her power stopped when it got to her underwear. Oh man, I haven't seen a more appropriate usage of underwear since Star Trek Into Darkness. No, really, the movie would fall apart without it. Jesus Christ, this is the most accident-prone bridge I've ever seen! What doesn't cause an emergency on this thing? But the four of them, of course, managed to save them. Get down on the ground. No, Get down on the ground now! Well, the crowd seems to like him, so what the hey? Your popularity equals no arrest today! But Ben's fiance doesn't seem to agree. 
I don't care if you saved a dozen people. You look like a decaying Oompa Loompa, and in my book, that's bad. That's what they're calling you. The Fantastic Four. You believe this? Which one of you is the leader? What? The, who would ask that? Which one of you is the leader? I'm just assuming that all good Samaritans have leaders. Oh, I'm also gonna be a copy of your theme song. We do not know much more than you do at this point. A new day is done. The day of the Fantastic Four. So, at the height of their popularity and the whole entire world calling them heroes, what do the backers of Victor's incredibly popular experiment do? Pull out, of course! Planning to use the publicity. The board's in agreement. The bank's lost enough already. This isn't a negotiation, it's a notification. We're pulling out. It's too late, Victor. Do you know how much money? I've invested in this company. Do you know how much I ripped this scene off the first Spider-Man? So they seclude themselves in the building to discover more about their powers. Welcome back to the Baxter, Dr. Richards. I've got the usual for you. Good to have you back, sir. <laughs> I'm so the Watcher. Whoa! So they spend the majority of their time figuring out how to control their new abilities. Any hotter and you're approaching Supernova. Sweet! Not only could you kill yourself, but you can set fire to Earth's atmosphere and destroy all human life as we know it. Okay, important safety tip. Thank you, we got. You should be able to bend light around other objects, even people, if you could control your emotional state better. Wow, a person whose powers is tied to their emotion? I have never friggin' seen that. I mean, you broke up with me, right? I was ready for the next step. You weren't. I think it was a little bit more complicated than that. I just wanted to share an apartment. What was so complicated about that? <laughs> We're men. We just don't do the commitment thing, remember? I mean, Jesus. If Jessica Alba came up to me and said she wanted to share an apartment, I'd of course say no. Commitment, grr, we hate that shit. Ooh, punch testosterone balls, grr. Seriously, you're a stupid fucking movie movie. finds out he's starting to get some side effects as well. I can't pretend to know what we're dealing with here. We need to keep this confidential. Victor, this disease is progressive, degenerative. I have to notify someone. Okay, word of advice. If you're talking to a guy and he starts to go like this, he's probably gonna attack you. Or take a piss. Probably both. But they find out the celebrity is apparently really tough to get used to. Actually, no, they don't. They just wanted another reason for Alba to strip naked. I can't believe I'm doing this again. <sighs> I really thought getting my skirt caught in Better Luck Chuck would be the end of these scenes. How are you gonna cure us? I'm gonna build a machine to recreate the storm. Well, but Joe, the wait a minute! You can just recreate the storm with a machine? Why the fuck did you spend billions of dollars to go into space then? Was it like eggs versus egg beaters? The universe's version was just a little more tasty? You can knock! Sorry. Should we just put a counter in there? Yeah, apparently the film needs it. So, again, something you might have noticed is really missing in this movie is that there doesn't seem to be that much crime fighting going on. Okay, don't get me wrong, it's important to understand your powers, but in most films it's like a few minutes tops. We're an hour in and all they've done is save a bridge of people that really was caused by them to begin with. I'm not seeing what's so especially fantastic about them. Johnny! Okay, it looks like Johnny's finally leaving. Well, good. Stop a robbery, punch out a crime boss or something. Mr. Johnny, stop! Or ride a motorcycle and whore yourself out some more. It's what Superman would do. He did. Oh, yes, he did. So what are your superhero names? They call me the Human Torch. Yeah. What about the rest of the team? That's the Invisible Girl. What about girl? your leader? Uh, I'm 15. Now I'm gonna go kill him. Relatively pissed off, they go to confront Johnny about what he's been doing. Time to go Street Fighter bonus level. <laughs> yeah, that would cut his head off. Bring it, Burnout! You two need a timeout! Fuck the blockhead, he started it! I don't care! Damn it, Johnny! Uh, now, they're supposed to be uh, crime fighting in this crime fighting movie, right? Uh, hello? Uh, hello? <sighs> yes? 
Ben ends up going to a bar where a blind woman hears his woes and takes pity on him. If there's a god, he hates me. She is not so into hate. Look, lady, you can call God a turnip for all I care as long as you convince somebody to start crime fighting! But Victor vows to destroy Reed, I guess because he's more successful? And tries to turn the team against each other. What are you doing here? I was worried about you. You know, for a guy who says he doesn't want to be seen in public, he sure is seen in public a lot. Reed is gonna fix me up, okay? I mean, other than spending more time with Sue. What? How dare that asshole have a personal life? I'm gonna show him by refusing his cure! No, really, that's what happens. I spent my whole life protecting you, and for what? So you can play Twister with your girlfriend while I'm the freak of the wheel? That'll show my only hope for salvation. I sure showed me, pow, 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 pow. This shouldn't be turning me on, but it kind of is. You two are on your own. Hey, look what the marketing guys gave you. It's quadrant time. Hey, that'll go great with all the Black Widow merchandise. Ben leaves the three of them behind to see if Von Doom can help him out any better. His name is Von Doom! Do you want to be Ben Grimm again? Just do it before I remember whether or not I even run a business anymore. <laughs> ben returns back to normal, but Victor feeds off the energy he emits to make him even stronger. He decides to give himself a chilling identity. One that involves a creepy-ass mask given to him for humanitarian purposes. Yeah, I remember when Mother Teresa got awarded a chain maze from India. And decides to go after Reed. How? By freezing him, apparently. That's not like you, Reed. <clears throat> after all, we're both doctors. Okay, stop, stop, stop. I'm just giving you a heads up, guys. Honestly, I'm taking the Corman version more seriously than this. I mean, come on, what are you doing? Did you raid George Sanders' makeup kit from the 60s Batman? You're two seconds away from the Austrian ice puns. Let's check in on the rest of the family. Let's do it before I figure out why the hell I suddenly hate you all right now. Blame on! Johnny distracts the missile away while Susan goes to save Reed. Fire! You know, you really should be renamed the Mildly Interfering for. Ben sees the trouble going on, changes himself back, and very unrealistically gets over there like the speed of fucking light. It's clobbering time. That's what my toy says! Damn, I've been waiting to do that. You and a butt-numbingly bored audience, buddy. So we finally get some real fighting with powers, rays, electricity, guys getting hit by buses only to walk out the door. Why is this a thing in bad movies? Johnny, supernova. I thought we agreed that was bad. Now! Risking the lives of all humanity is worth it just to save our selfish asses. But it's contained in Susan's force field and they end up turning him into a real life statue, resulting in the city throwing a big boat party. Yes, thank you for saving yourselves as he was just basically going after you the entire time. Seriously, what was his plan again? Sue Storm, will you marry me? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's my nose, genius. These are my lips. Well, mostly, I've had them done like 10 times. So I think you can see why, as superheroes, we were so inspired by this movie. All you gotta do is look hot in tight outfits, say a lot of exposition about yourself without actually exposing any character, and only save people if you yourself cause the trouble. The rest of the time, just look out for yourself and flaunt what little you do. Sheesh, I can't imagine at all why anybody wouldn't enjoy this fantastic superhero film. It just friggin' inspires so much. My god, guys! Cthulhu is risen and he's taking over the world! <laughs> you weak, pathetic fools! I come for your souls! Nah, I think he'd be a good ruler. Yeah, everyone loves Cthulhu. But when he's done with the world, he'll come for you. This looks like a job for the adequately impressive three! What the hell? That was easy. What? Yeah, Malcolm took 
turn him into Xiao Peng's head from Hong Kong 97. Yeah, I stuck with the classics. That's it! I'm gonna expose myself to that meteorite and actually use my powers to benefit humanity! Out of the way! Aren't you giant sack of space rock? Come to me! Wow! You just became really good at Hong Kong 97! How come you guys get all the cool stuff? Because we love you! <laughs>superhero team surprisingly no yeah you'd think we'd remember something like that you mean you have no recollection when a meteor smashed into earth gave us incredible powers forming the trio of the adequately impressive three and then we just sat around and watched daredevil on netflix yeah the clips helped us remember why didn't we do anything after that well we did have that unpleasant encounter with the silver surfer yeah but that was so bad that everyone forgot it as they should but maybe we've forgotten what it means to be superheroes. What do you mean? What if we did it again? What if we brought back the adequately impressive three, only this time we did it right? How? We'd be darker, grittier, and more realistic, which as we all know, immediately equals better. No more pixelator, clobberer, or sparky sparky boom man. Together. We shall be Malcolm, Tamra, and Nostalgia Critic. Wait, what happened to our superhero names? We're too edgy for that. We don't need them anymore. And together, we shall become... Oh, I see. You let the title display our name so we wouldn't have to say it out loud. Exactly. That's really embracing our brand with pride. And enough of this bright, colorful background. Hey, we're in a dark room. Our lives are a dark room. One big dark room. God, Critic, this is so different. What are we gonna do with the new us? This time we're gonna get it right! We're gonna sit around and watch Jessica Jones on Netflix! Is this a metaphor for something? Oh! How are you guys still not fighting crime? Quiet, Rob! Can you see we're brooding? But you're doing the same thing you did last time! No, we're doing it in a darker room. Look, just because... Uh, just because you're doing the same thing in a dark room does not mean you're still not doing the same thing! Of course it does! Being dark and unpleasant always equals more sophisticated and faithful. Just look at the original source material. Doesn't that just scream dark rooms and gritty realism? I think somebody needs to read a comic. Hmm. <laughs> Let me guess. You just saw the last cinematic version of Fantastic Four. <laughs> no. Just saw the last cinematic version of Fan Four Stick! Fox's disastrous reboot of the Fantastic Four franchise was not only a critical audience and box office portal of suck, but even the director expressed his disappointment on Twitter before the film came out. Man, there's ouch, and then there's... This would be the fourth time the Fantastic Four was botched cinematically. And it's sad that with such an impressive amount of failures, the most accurate representation is this one. What kind of thing have I turned into? What have you done? What have you done? Yeah, they get that bad. So, while you focus on what's most important, perfecting your brooding pose, get off of me! <laughs> I'll start the review. This is... Fantastic Four.
The film opens with the Fox logo flashing the letter F, similar to how they flashed the letter X before the X-Men films. Honestly, if you want to give us any assurance, you'd flash this. We see a young Reed Richards getting distracted by his scientific ideas at school. Don't you know? American high school is where ideas go to die! Earth to Richards. <sighs> Beat me up, Scotty. <laughs> Star Trek jokes always wins over an entire class. We see his teacher, Homer Simpson. No, really, that's his voice actor, Dan Castellaneta. <laughs> Random. Is not happy with his future goals. I want to be the first person in human history to teleport himself. It's already possible to transport quantum information from one location to another. Even if you could build the thing... But... I've already built it. I am also working on a foolproof way to keep Dee Dee out of my room! But the assignment was to pick a real career in the real world. Where can't you be a nuclear safety engineer? Or an astronaut? Or mayor? Or country singer manager? I can keep going. I've had over 188 jobs. You think your franchise is running on fumes? Phew! But his friend Ben also seems to be having trouble when he goes home to a dysfunctional family. Hey! Come here, what you think? Yay, that lighthearted phrase is from an abusive household. But Reed says he can get him out of this movie. I mean situation. He just needs a power converter for his flux capacitor. I mean remake of Explorers. I mean teleporter. Actually, flux capacitor would sound more reasonable at this point. Don't blow up. Don't blow up. Oh, what every producer said when this movie premiered. Holy smokes, I made weed! We're gonna be the Fantastic 420! Years go by and the two are ready to try their experiment again at the science fair. It modulates the frequency of matter from one location to another and back again. Marge! The eggheads are saying the word things again! It's a teleporter. Yeah, whatever, nerd. When are you gonna stretch already? You may want to cover your ears. The experiment makes the teleport to a location they're not sure of, so there's no proof it actually teleported. But it does result in a sonic boom so powerful it destroyed the basketball hoop. So, hey, that's gotta count for something. Yeah, you're disqualified. Wait, what? Wait, what? This is a science fair, not a magic competition. So, magic destroyed the basketball hoop. Jesus, what does it take to impress you, Homer? It only transports matter. Mm -hmm. Well, thank God the director of a government-sponsored research institute working on interdimensional teleportation just happened to be there! No, really, someone must have been eating Lucky's pubes to have that happen! I think you've cracked interdimensional travel. We're from the Baxter Foundation. We'd like to give you a full scholarship. I was going to give a grant for that paper mache volcano, but I guess this is a little better. They take him to a school so high-tech they can't fully light their hallways as Reed tries to get friendly with the director's daughter, Sue Storm. So you like music? Is that kind of like your thing? Oddly enough, no. What sounds that form melodies, is that still a thing? There's patterns in everything and everyone. What's mine? You want to be famous? Am I that predictable? Well, when you're in this movie, it's hard not to be. If Wait, a... Victor Von Doom is on here. Yep, you heard that correctly. This dark, gritty, realistic version still has a guy named Von Doom in it. Because Professor Von Evil Nasty wasn't obvious enough. Nevertheless, Storm is still convinced he should be brought on to the project. So someone stole my design. No one stole anything, Victor. Bullshit, you know Borat and Peter Dinklage stole my face. Hell, we even make a joke about it later. I'm sorry, this is Borat. Figure seeing how our box office will be on par with Bruno. Who's that? Victor. Who's Victor? And why did I notice him when literally nothing makes him stand out at all? Even the shot isn't composed so that you'll focus on him. I'm more likely to think this guy is Victor. This is our villain, folks. Even the movie forgets he's supposed to be important. Rudimentary. They do see images, though, from the parallel dimension that they're trying to get to. It's beautiful. You can tell by the investment in my voice. They hope this new world can save our current one, as I'm assuming Earth is being drained of its color by FBI's most wanted terrorists. It's a whole new world. Which can help save this one. Not that it deserves to be saved. Dr. Doom over here. See, I don't even know how to take that. Was she making a joke or just calling him by his name? It's like calling your bad guy, Doctor, you're a monster. There just be some confusion down the road. <laughs> but it turns out Storm has another son named Johnny, who's a reckless troublemaker. In this scene, he is literally never reckless or causes trouble throughout the rest of the film. Well, you're not getting the car back. Excuse me? You're gonna have to earn it. 
You're gonna have to come work for me. I'm not wearing a lab coat. So Johnny joins a world-changing experiment to get his car back. Because you know, life. And is reintroduced to the team. Is that Adolf? Long time. You don't need to make fun of his name. It does it quite naturally on its own. They have their little making stuff montage complete with doo 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 music. And it appears they've made a lot of progress. What's up? I gotta say, it's fun having you here. Uh, did we miss that part? Not kidding, there has never been one moment of any of these characters smiling except for one shot in the montage where they're eating and not saying a word to each other. Is the movie's idea of building chemistry literally building chemistry? Look, don't get used to this. I'm just here to get my car back. You don't understand. We had Chinese food and do 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 music! Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our first action scene. The time has come to test the portal on an unrendered model from Space Chimps. They would have used a real monkey, but apparently sitting in a chair was too dangerous. And it seems to be successful. But it turns out they don't want to use the inventors for the first human teleports. D doesn't that kind of go without saying? We have to start thinking about sending men. Us. I think it's time to start coordinating with our friends at NASA. Oh, hey, thank you. The shuttle to the moon wasn't invented by Neil Armstrong. They even make a reference to that later. You guys know who built the Apollo spacecraft, went to the moon. But you know who Neil Armstrong is, right? Uh, yeah. Exactly. So why did you think you were going? Unless we go first. Why don't we go first? Oh, God, this thing works. Ah, yes. Let's screw up a history-making experiment for your egos. I'm sure this will in no way... You know what? Hold on a second. Turn on a light! Sorry, I had to get that out just once. <clears throat> I'm sure this will in no way muck everything up, but in order to destroy everything they worked for, our three scientists need one more to go with them. Well, I'm sure you're all thinking of the same brilliant mind who had such a big impact, Ben. Ben. Because, you know, why the hell not? He has no scientific mind, done literally nothing, and outed himself as so useless that he just left Reed before they even started building it. Yeah. Going away, present. I'm just going to school here. It looks like you're home, buddy. So, of course! Of course it should be him! Look, Ben, I need you to come. Because we're going tonight. I told the guys that I'm not going without you. Okay? Who's going to have my back? Oh, yeah. Broom handle arms is really going to be trouble for any danger out there. Surely he must be drunk. Are you drunk? Yeah, I am a little drunk. Even more reason to do it! Why didn't the moon landing go this way? Houston, I'm so plastered, and I know one chick scientist worked really hard on this and everything, but my buddy owned a junkyard, couldn't protect me to save either of our lives, and bros before hoes. Scientifically, this has to be done. Hey, look, an asteroid. Let's go give it a kiss. So they travel to this new dimension to discover it's just as dark and bland as our world. It's amazing. We did it. Don't you dare take off your Sub-Zero mask. If we come across Reptile in this outworld, we want to be evenly matched. But here's something I bet you never thought they would come across in this movie. Something. Yeah, goddamn something. I bet you thought they would never get to that in this film. <laughs> My god, Mountain Dew is working on another new flavor. Don't let it touch you, or most of all, drink it! Victor gets left behind, Ben is covered in Cadbury eggs, and Sue, despite not being there, somehow gets affected as well. Sorry, babe, it's one small step for man. You just get our gamma farts. Life is fair. It turns out Reed can now stretch incredibly far. I dare even say we call him Mr. Fantastic. No, 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 just kidding. That'd be just like a comic book. Wait, the origin story for Flame Princess is a lot more intense than I thought it'd be. Sue, of course, gets invisible powers, and Ben looks like an uneaten rock biter Cheeto. Wait, what? What happened to me? I don't know. But I'm gonna figure this out. Shit! Ben! Ben, I'm coming back for you, I promise! And by come back, I mean abandon you, not help you in any way, and never return. Theirs is a complicated love. Hey look, a dark room. I haven't seen that yet. Where is Reed?
Reed's gone. You want to find a cure? We have resources here. Okay, so this is particularly interesting. We just got done with a scene showing pretty much what Ben looks like. A cookie turd shit out by the rock monster from Galaxy Quest. Yet for some reason they keep his identity a secret here. Even though we clearly already know what he looks like. The rooms being dark have already been pretty pointless, but this movie found a black hole of pointless. Like there's already no point and yet somehow it creates even less of a point. Is it too late to call them the all around uninteresting dark blur for? To make things even stranger, we're almost at the one hour mark and only now have they changed into their hero forms. Most of them just woke up and suddenly it's one year later, Ben is fighting for the army, Johnny has just figured out how to shoot fireballs, Sue can turn herself and other things invisible while also creating force fields, and they want to harness this power so they can go back to the parallel dimension to get even more powers. Now. You think I'm paraphrasing there. What'd that take? Maybe a minute for me to say? It takes the movie the exact same amount of time to get all that information at you. Yeah, most of the superhero stuff is done in one goddamn minute. And it's not even in the forefront. See Ben doing all this cool action stuff? Well, it's not nearly as exciting as watching it in the distance with a bunch of lifeless douchebags sitting around. We finally get some friggin' action, and it's not even the focus. How would you like it if an action scene in the Dark Knight was from a distance being watched by somebody else? Here's your copy, Mr. Fox. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that... Batman fighting the Joker? Yes. Does that somehow seem less dramatic to you? Hmm. You're quite right. Hold these. Ah, much better. Sippy, sippy. Mm. Now this is exciting. But don't worry, if this is too much out of your comfort zone, fear not, we go right back into talking in dark rooms again. What if it takes more time to get it right? We could be talking years. I am not going to be a tool. The movie strongly disagrees. But it looks like Reed has been missing for a year too. Yeah, sure is hard to track a butt naked scientist with no military training. However, he's eventually found by the army who bring Ben in. Oh my god, Ben. So, this is where you've been hiding now. Hey, where's your thing? I, I just thought of a good name for you. Whoa! Okay, finally we're gonna get some action. Well, that was short. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Out of the magnitude of variety we've had in this film so far, let me take a guess. A wild goddamn guess what's coming up next. Oh my god! Why is this fantastic? Why is this fantastic? Your goddamn movie is called Fantastic Four and you can't even get one fantastic thing in it. Why is talking in a goddamn dark room fantastic? What? 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 Did you have an upbringing like the boy from Room? Is this literally all you know? Was the outside only explained to you in pictures and stories? If so, could you tell one of those stories? Because it's goddamn more interesting than that horse shit! An outside scene! Take it away! Ah, that's better! Do you ever wonder what life would have been like if you hadn't come to the science fair that day? We could have been sitting in a dark room with table lamps. <laughs> table lamps! Reed is back. We're closer than we've ever been before. Closer to what? The end credits! We can finally star in real movies again! They return to Planet Burnt Brownie, where they discover Doom is alive and well. Hey, trust me, as long as this movie is still going, Doom will always be alive and well. You want to know how I survived? That place gave me strength. Okay, I know it's a comic book adaptation, there have to be some changes, but... What is with Fox's obsession of turning Marvel characters into Slipknot crash test dummies? Is this the one design they think exists? It's getting a little old. Hell, it was never that interesting to begin with. This movie really is the master of throwing boring, uninteresting things at you in a movie that's called Fantastic! Christ, what do you think their design for the climax is? That freaking portal in the sky cliche? <laughs> Nostalgia Critic? <gasps> Nostalgia Critic! Oh. Oh. Do you remember Chi-Town, Mr. Critic? It'll be spring soon. 
and the orchards will be in blossom, and the birds will be nesting in the hazel thicket, and they'll be sowing the summer barley in the lower fields, and eating the first of the strawberries with cream. Do you remember the taste of strawberries? No, Rob. I can't recall the taste of food or the sound of originality. I'm naked in the dark. Ew, a dark room just talking and talking, doing nothing but talking. With that cliche, that portal staring at me. I can see it with my bored, bored eyes. Then let us be rid of it once and for all. I can't carry that cliché, Mr. Critic, but I can carry you! Or, you know, you could just finish the damn review. Yeah, I guess that's an option. This was, um, this was weird, what we just did right here. Yeah, a little bit. So you might be wondering, where the hell did this destroy the world thing suddenly come from? Especially from a guy with such a cuddly name like Doom. Well, I'll give this movie some credit. Instead of having a huge exposition dump in one minute like before, this movie gives us at least 20 seconds more. Yep, in that short amount of time, he says that his life cycle is tied to that world, that he believes our world will destroy it, so he wants to destroy ours before it can get the jump on his world and- Ooh. Thank you, Clip, from the obscure movie Screwed. You're right. Moving on. It looks like Professor Storm gets murdered. Oh, that just looks weird without a Jim Carrey song number going on. And our hero- Sorry, it was only two syllables and I still couldn't say it. Our... These guys tried to stop him from sucking the world into his dimensional bullshit. But Victor is too powerful and figures out ways to stop all of them. Victor, don't do this! There is no Victor. There is only Doom. I'm not wasting the clip on you. But the Fantastic Boar eventually get the drop on it. Hey, it's clobbering time! Yeah, in the context of the movie, that line really should be What my brother said before he beat me up still lacking relevance! <laughs> Yay! We did! Whatever we did! We'd like to continue our existing relationship. We don't need you or anybody else to keep an eye on us. We just want a place where we can work. And what if we say no? Say yes. How much space are we talking okay, about? Okay, I'm actually so disinterested in what's going on. I am actually more curious in who took how many rolls from that plate. Okay, only Johnny seemed to take one. He apparently didn't finish it. The others had coffee, but nobody drank their water. Dude, that guy was on fire. I think he would at least have some water. These are the biggest concerns I'm coming out of this movie with! So they're given their own location to continue to test out their powers because the Lord knows we haven't seen enough of that in these movies. As they seem to interact off each other. I think that the four of us should have a name. Why would we need a name? Because we're a team now, and there's four of us, so we should come up with a name for it. How about two guys, a girl, and the thing that nobody wanted? Hey, we both know that you could take him. Jesus, I'm beginning to see why you didn't give him personalities. Their relationships to the roles was more interesting. It's fantastic. Yes, it is. Guys, I got it. Oh, we didn't have to say it out loud, but you still had to take a movie with a guy named Von Doom seriously. Piss off. And that was Fan Snorstick. It's bad. Really bad. The other Fantastic Four movies fail too, but at least they fail in an over-the-top way that at least try to embrace the look and corniness of the comic. It's like it's a shame to have anything to do with Fantastic Four or comic books in general. In fact, when you add them all together, the Hammer film is still the only one where they choose to fight crime and they're not the ones who cause all the destruction they're fighting against. How does that happen? How does that happen in two reboots you're trying to make better? All I can say is there's a right way and a wrong way to do dark, gritty comic book material. And this is definitely the wrong way. I'm the Nostalgia Critic and I'm just done. No, I'm done guys. This movie took a lot out of me. But, but, okay. Now what are we supposed to do? 
Pss. Avengers and Spider-Man. Oh, don't worry. We still have plans for you. You don't, do you? Not a thing. And you get to suffer for it. Now, continue being anything but what you really are. Flame on! I think you mean lights out. Yay! Are you idiots ever going to treat your superhero personas with dignity? Hey, we were going to stop an evil alien from destroying the world. Yeah, but we had a bar hopping day we've been planning for months, and ain't nothing going to get in the way of that. <laughs> oh. oh. Where the hell is even Tamar? Uh, we told her about our bender, but she said she had too much dignity and self-respect to indulge in our childish behavior. Well, at least somebody had some sense. Ah, just kidding. She got blitzed on moonshine. I don't remember where we left her. I'm gonna have to ask you to exit the donut. You friggin' idiots! The world's on fire! How about yours? That's, That's the way, way I like it, it and I, I never, never get bored. bored. <laughs> oh. No, I mean the world is literally on fire! You let that happen a lot. Yeah, what is this, like the 10th Earth we've been through on this show? <laughs> Could you two let this happen? You don't understand. Even though we've let the world go to shit, we've been planning this bender for a while. A big while. When are you two gonna learn that with great power comes great responsibility? When Fox learns that with great franchises comes effort. <sighs> let me guess. You two just saw... The greatest of the 20th Century Fox Fantastic Four movies! Sadly, that's true. Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Sur... Oh, yeah, that's the usual reaction. You know, I have other pockets. Because 20th Century Fox loves to punish you for liking comics, they gave us a sequel that really nobody was asking for because, well, we saw the first one. Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, I guess, tries to up the ante by giving us a new character, a wedding, and... That's it. Yeah, not a whole lot was added, and I guess people recognize that as this was the last for this particular Fantastic Four series, totaling this cast franchise to just two flicks. But to its credit, the others didn't attempt to make it that far, so I guess that's something. Does it try the least out of the movies, or does it just appear to try the least? Well, as long as there's always a superhero series that does very little superheroing. Dude, I'm like on a donut. <laughs> <laughs> Always be here to exploit it. Let's take a look at Fantastic Four Rise of the Middle Finger. I mean Silver Surfer. We open on planet shit as it seems to be destroyed and a glowing orb escapes its destruction. Man, DC Superman reboots are getting lazier. The credits fly by so quickly it's like someone's tossing them out of the garbage disposal. As even the description captions are so embarrassed to be in this movie they barely want to stand out. This whole movie has the attitude of, we made it, we're sorry, we're just gonna get through it as quickly as possible. The beaming life flies around the earth, messing up the world's environments. <laughs> oh my god, he paused the movie, we're trapped here forever! Ah! Blackouts, frozen water, snow in Egypt, this is some end of the world shit right here, but the big story today is the much anticipated wedding of fantastic couple Reed Richards and Susan Storm this Saturday. That is word for goddamn word what the news is reporting. But the big story today, the much anticipated wedding of fantastic couple Reed Richards and Susan Storm this Saturday. It's also raining frogs in Detroit, but what will Susan's dress look like? I'm gonna give you something special. Cool. Yeah, if I had a nickel every time I saw a headline like that. Neil deGrasse Tyson, genius or famous genius? Whoa, I'm buying that paper! 
As the crowds continue to roll, we see our heroes at the airport sprinkling their celebrity, both figuratively and sadly literally. Wow, this is better than when I got Randy Quaid's dandruff! Best birthday ever! But Susan is legitimately concerned these end-of-the-world reactions are going to ruin her special day. This is gonna be the wedding you've always dreamed of, and I'm not gonna let anything get in the way of that. Not even the mysterious transformation of matter at the subatomic level. Aw, oh, I guess. That's the most romantic thing you've ever said to me. You let the world explode so she can have her happy moment? You know when they sing, I'll stop the world and melt with you, it's not scientifically sound advice! It looks like the Fantastic Four have their first fantastic dilemma of fantastic proportions! The flight is overbooked! It seems we're overbooked. We do have some seats available in coach, though. <laughs> How's the world looking again? <laughs> awesome. What are we focusing on? That's my seat. Sorry. I was born ready for this! Let's see our heroes excitingly steal luggage space from unexpecting saps. Ah, uh, her medicine's in that bag she'll have to now check, but at least you're using your powers for good. Fantastic Four! They're kinda dicks. The news continues to discuss all the crazy shit going on in the world. Thank God our heroes still have the focus where it needs to be. I have a fitting in half an hour. I haven't even picked out the place settings for the flowers. New uniforms just showed up. There's no way we're wearing that, Johnny. What do you have against capitalism? Well, nothing. But judging by that obvious Circuit City ad and the fact that they went out of business shortly after this film came out, what do you have against capitalism? Susan is so gung-ho about him being focused on the wedding and nothing else that he has to actually sneak his research about saving the world without her knowing. Keep it quiet, but uh, I've cross-referenced and analyzed the global disturbances. But, you know, don't let any of the other world scientists know Susan will throw a tizzy fit. They're being caused by cosmic radiation, not unlike the kind which gave us our powers. That's really boring. And I'm not just saying that because I'm really friggin' dumb. But screw those world-destroying disturbances. Bachelor party, man! I don't know anybody here. Yeah, I would have invited some of your friends, but you really don't have any. Yeah, maybe if we actually save people instead of stealing overhead compartments. Now nah, we're awesome. Let's party! <laughs> well, Fink tries to hang out with Bob T.J. Miller Ross, we see how the Fantastic Four's incredibly high-tech research facility is heavily guarded. Uh, good evening and welcome to the Faxter. Uh, you can't use that elevator. Rob Reiner lookalike contest, I'm gonna be late. I have to do my job, I guess. Ms. Storm will be with you shortly. Hello? Yay, I'll have no other part in this movie. A couple hundred in special effects down the tube. Fantastic! We're here to see Dr. Richards. I'm sorry, he isn't here right now. Is there anything I can help you with? Yes, you can take me to see Dr. Richards. Uh, you know, I'm a doctor too. A doctor of planning weddings, which this better not interrupt! She finds Alas to hurl, dancing with some hotties, much to her dismay. Let's talk somewhere private. Unless you need to do jello shots off someone's stomach. <laughs> no, no, can I? Here's someplace private, a completely abandoned kitchen in the middle of a busy as hell nightclub. I mean, seriously, who eats? What can I do for you? As you may know, there have been recent unusual occurrences all over the world. <sighs> okay, warning signs a movie's gonna be bad, using the phrase, as you know. It's a bad way to get out exposition, because if the person knows, why are they saying it? As you may know, there have been recent unusual occurrences. As you may know, there are many who consider the Miss United States pageant outdated. As you know, a blockade is perfectly legal. As you know, I conducted a raid on the Great Library, which most said didn't even exist. As you know, those movies all blow. They say the situation is a lot worse than the public knows, which... Already sounded pretty bad. And Reed can help by building a sensor to track the cause of the problem. But he can't because, you know. I'm afraid I can't. What? You see, I'm getting married this Saturday. I just don't have the time. Gotta love this guy's look like, idiot, you for real? And gotta love her look like, yeah, that's my loving idiot who danced with two strippers with his hands near their crotches a second ago. Forgive and forget that the world's gonna die. Besides. It was nothing compared to what I did at my bachelorette party. Oh, trust me, we know. You weren't invisible that night. So Doctor Doom from the last movie escaped because apparently he had the same weak-ass security the Fantastic Four did. As the big day arrives, that's so half-assed, they openly say their Stan Lee cameo is a Stan Lee cameo. Name? Stan Lee. Yeah, uh, nice try, buddy. Nice no, no, try. really, I, nice I'm try. Stan Lee. Yeah. My god, they destroyed his creation so much, they don't even recognize he's the creator. But even after stopping Reed from protecting humanity for her friggin' day, she still isn't goddamn satisfied. 
bitch! No, Alicia. It just doesn't feel right. Could it be because we haven't saved anyone, we haven't put in danger ourselves, and now by dodging our responsibilities, we're doing it again? Oh wait, no, it's the zit! Crisis averted. Fantastic! Now all I have to do is concentrate on the area continuously for the next eight hours. But it looks like Reed did create this sensor and was even finishing it on his wedding day. Even as they say two craters are heading to Earth, Thing is telling him to focus on more important things. We've already gotten reports of two more craters. Here comes the bride. Okay, you need a world to get married in, jackasses! You are all jackasses! You look beautiful. Thank you. Dad would be proud. Aw, how touching. In that they're physically touching each other. Outside that, I don't feel shit. But don't worry, the sentimental casting of the priest will win your heart over. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Wait, I didn't even get a funny line. Why'd you hire a comedian for this part? Oh, wait, let me try this. <clears throat> Mowage! Mowage Bond is the bond! Ah, screw it. I'm gonna go bomb a Big Bang Theory. <laughs> but uh-oh, Thing's blind girlfriend seems to be in danger. Well, they say your other senses are heightened once one is gone. And her sense of stupidity not noticing a gigantic loud blade hurling towards her is certainly amped. <laughs> Johnny chases after the beam of light that caused the mayhem, but more importantly, Susan is bombed about her wedding day. Oh no! <laughs> you know, this is a side note, but remember when she had to cover her zit and she said this line? Now all I have to do is concentrate on the area continuously for the next eight hours. So, even when stopping a helicopter and breaking down on her most important day, she still has that zit covered! Glad to know where all the focus is going! This is the worst day I ever had! No zit, no zit, no zit! I wonder how many people died! No zit, no zit, no zit, no zit! Man, it's fast! Man, my ADR is off! Yeah, they run to the men in black coming the other direction. It looks like the beam of light is known as the Silver Surfer, who drags Johnny into space, sadly not resulting in his body exploding, and Surfer talks with a powerful entity. Your herald summons you. Another world awaits. Let it be done, quickly. <sighs> okay, so... That's Doug Jones as the body of the Silver Surfer, and that's Lawrence Fishburne as the voice of the Silver Surfer. It really doesn't work. Fishburne has a big, booming voice that should come out of a big, booming body. Doug Jones is super tall and super skinny, and therefore sounds like this. Right on time, as always. That's not to say deep voices can't come out of thin bodies and high voices can't come out of big bodies. But if, say, Lawrence Fishburne's voice came out of this... I taught, I taught a putty tat. I'd be a little distracted, wouldn't you? Meanwhile, Johnny tells everyone what he saw. And it was flying this, like, like a surfboard type thing. I know that sounds crazy. So, did you follow the shiny man to Lollipop Land or the Rainbow Junction? Yeah, isn't that crazy, Corn Pops man? Now let's go consult the stretchy guy. You are all jackasses! Susan's okay that Reed built the device, which seems surprisingly understanding. For her. But she has more to say while also making sure you don't sleep tonight. Okay, sorry. Please continue. <laughs> I didn't need that urine in my body. You cannot beat us. We will never have normal lives as long as we do what we do. Exactly. What do we do again? But something happened when the surfer touched Johnny. That sounded worse than I intended. When someone with powers touches him, they seem to switch. Hey, it's the human torch! Alright, I'm having strange physical thoughts I never had for the human torch before! Hey, get out of there! Sue, your clothes! Why does this always happen to me? Gotta love the unconvincing way she said that line as if she knew exactly why this always happens to her. Why does this always happen to me? And why does Thor always have his shirt off? This is weird! They decide to play around with it more as Thing switches powers with Torch. Oh my god! Come on! You look like one of the Smosh guys in a gritty reboot of the Tigger movie. Actually, who am I kidding? That could be the next Fantastic Four reboot! Hey! Hey, it's me! 
I'm back! Wow, I felt human skin for the first time in years. The psychological impact this is gonna have on me is tremendous. Oh, I guess it meant nothing. Moving on. You and me are gonna be spending a whole lot of time together, pal. <laughs> I can't compete with the flame on joke you've already made in your head, so I'll just continue. Hi, just a reminder, I'm in this movie. Okay, bye. So Susan sits around watching gossip news about herself. Hey, remember when she used to do science? And Reed tries to solve the problem. Well, what if after this crisis is over, we leave it all behind? I'll take a teaching position somewhere. And the two of us will live our lives and raise a family like normal people. Maybe they have a point. All this superheroing is really exhausting. What superheroing? Yes, you're right. We've done so much for the community, just like the Fantastic Four. Maybe we have earned calling it quits. You haven't done bull crap! You thinking what I'm thinking? What if Mr. Peanut has a peanut allergy? And? We should give up being the adequately impressive three. Right. It was a good run. It was no run behind something beautiful. Hollywood marriages have lasted longer. We've stopped so many catastrophes. Anything you stopped, you started. But if we are to have our own lives... What lives? We must make the sacrifice. The adequately impressive three are no more. Oh, we should probably let Tamara know. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Hey! It's over. Okay. Dr. Doom hunts down the surfer and tries to make a deal with him. Together, we could be unstoppable. Anything would be ours for the taking. I mean, you with your world-destroying powers and me with my badass cloak. All that you know is at an end. What? I'm sorry. The surfer's powers seem to cure Doom because that'll show him. So now he looks less like verminous scum and more like a wax model of Seth MacFarlane. But even bigger problems are on the horizon. It seems every planet the surfer visits is always destroyed a week later. He's the ring video of apocalypses. We've gotta stick to the plan and work as a team. Oh, so we're a team now. That's news to me. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. You should have told us. All right, all right, that's enough. What the hell is wrong with you people? I'm talking about you people filming this scene. Have you ever been on a helicopter? Why are you shooting it like this? You're shooting it like it's a back and forth in a carnival funhouse. And why are you zooming in? Helicopters don't zoom in. You are all jackasses. They find out the next disturbance will be in London, so they try to head over there to stop it. Oh no! Does this mean the Fantastic Four will actually have to do something? Don't worry, maybe Matt LeBlanc. Invisible Woman will save you with... much more impressive powers than I thought she had. Holy shit, she could do all this? I feel like there's a lot of scenarios where encasing building-sized objects and walking on air could have been useful. And on top of that, she still has that zip covered! It's only one day later, there's no Windex around, she's clearly still using energy on that! So give them a hand, the Fantastic Four finally stops something not caused by them! Though if they had time to focus more on these anomalies and not the wedding, they probably could have stopped it earlier. What the hell is wrong with you people? But the military doesn't see their good deeds as good enough. What the hell was that? I'm bringing in some help. General, you bring in more soldiers and weaponry, you're gonna put innocent people in danger. That's our job! So the military asked Dr. Doom for help. Because they don't realize how stupid dangerous it is just to say, ask Dr. Doom for help. His name is Doom! The world's at stake, and we need to work together to survive. You know, I just figured out why I can't take Dr. Doom seriously. On top of that, he always has a sneer that looks like he's one step away from making a childish insult. We don't agree to this. Yeah, how are the residuals for King Arthur, Lancelot? If I knew that, I wouldn't need you people, would I? You know quitting Captain America's dumb, right? Give it your best shot. You're aware Nip Tuck was overrated, wait, that was a dig at me. You have dumb hair! So Reed tries to figure out where the surfer is gonna appear next. Well, seeing how both Ben and Sue were scientists, I'm sure maybe they can help him out. Or she can just rub his neck and he gets blind drunk. Fantastic! They do figure out where he's gonna arrive next, though, and the military again, for no real reason, decide to treat them like assholes. So let me make it clear for you and your pack of freaks here. I'm the quarterback. You're on my team. 
Oh, by the way, thank you for helping us find this thing, weirdo! But I guess you never played football in high school. No, you're right. I stayed in and studied. And 15 years later, I'm one of the greatest minds of the 21st century. I'm engaged to the hottest girl on the planet. <laughs> Gotta love fighting simplification by simplifying his wife. I'm engaged to the hottest girl on the planet. Oh, she's also a director of genetic research, saved hundreds of lives, and can walk on friggin' nothing. But being called the hottest girl, which she clearly didn't like in the first film. That's the invisible girl. What about girl? your leader. That's the most important thing. That zit is still covered up! At least wait for her to come across the surfer to prove how useless she can be. Oh shit, that's all I had. Please give me a quick death. Why are you destroying our planet? I have no choice. There's always a choice. If Chris Evans can be in two Marvel properties, so can you! We'll put you in one of the Ant-Mans or something. But the surfer is attacked and... Yeah, that was kind of cool. Also kind of cool. Ah, oh, there's the dumb I was looking for. Not so tough now, are ya? You look like a kid who played your video game. So because it wouldn't be a Doug Jones movie without him being naked, covered in makeup, and looking in pain, here's all that stuff I just said. Really be a little more cooperative. However, the Fantastic Four aren't allowed to see the surfer. Guess just to make the military look like idiot assholes or something? Come on, they're besties with a guy named Doom. They have to be smart. So Susan sneaks in to talk to him. You said you weren't the one trying to destroy our world. Then who is? Oh my god, you're a Care Bear! The surface says he has to destroy worlds or else an evil entity named Galacticus will destroy his. Killing billions to save millions. I'm not a mathematician, but that seems pretty dumb. Why did you try to protect me? Because you're the hottest girl on the planet. Oh my god, does anyone take me seriously? No. <laughs> Actually, I'm not too far off. He says she reminds him of the woman he loves, and so he spared her. Yeah, all your education don't mean shit. As long as you got a familiar, fine ass, you're safe in this universe. What the hell is wrong with you people? So the military decides to give the all-powerful weapon to Doctor Doom. There is no way to rationalize that sentence without sounding like a complete dipshit. But beyond all comprehension, Doctor Doom steals the powerful weapon! What?! The mask! Why does he have that? Maybe he wants to see if it looks any better after all these years? No? Still looks dummy dumb. I look ridiculous! He photoshops any resistance to death and escapes. Our heroes try to follow them, but they're stopped at the exit. Oh no! It's that woman Johnny shared one scene with and she told him to piss off! Do I really need to show her letting them go for no reason? No, I don't, but here it is anyway. Please. We need to get to the roof! Well, I, what can I do? He said please! What the hell is wrong? They tracked Doom down and tried to get the board away from him before he... Huh, they forgot to say what his evil plan was. I guess just having the name Doom was evil motivation enough. He's so evil, he even uses the exact same taunting motion twice. You know, I've never been the giving type. Come and get it, Richards. What is this, a double mint gum commercial? Double, double your refreshment. Double, double your enjoyment. It looks like Sue sacrifices herself trying to save the surfer. I guess she had to because he's been on that board so long he forgot how to move his feet. Move out of the way, you jackass! You are all jackasses! But Johnny has a plan to absorb everybody's power to sneak up on Doom. It would take all of us. Or maybe just one of us. We don't know what it could do to you. Let's not make this about me. Well, seeing how you're making a joke while your goddamn sister is dying, you kinda are making it about you. So he takes all their abilities and proves the power of Fantastic One. It's clobbering time. <laughs> <laughs> On top of everything else, there's just something inherently hilarious about hearing a guy named Dr. Doom in that ridiculous costume gasp. It's clobbering time. <laughs> it's just so freaking funny. What were the other sounds that didn't make the cut? <laughs> oh no. Uh oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> the least you could do is follow it up with a. <laughs> Johnny finally gets the board away from Doom, but sadly, it doesn't look like Sue is gonna make it. Hottest girl in the world! I guess this inspires the surfer to stop Galacticus. 
Really? Nothing else in all those worlds you destroyed was as poetically powerful as the star of good luck Chuck biting the dust? What the hell? And he tries to set things right. Tell her she was right. We do have a choice. My choice is to get the hell out of here. Adios, you apes! It was a nice planet while it lasted! Okay, so this will be kind of cool. We're finally gonna see what Galacticus looks like. In the comic, he's a massive planet-eating supergiant. They even give us a hint making the shadow look like him heading towards Earth. This is gonna be pretty freaking cool. So, what do we get? A giant space anus that looks like it shit out the Langoliers. You sure Galacticus didn't just send his ass? You sure everyone didn't just send their ass? Surfer, I guess, sacrifices himself. Kinda making you wonder why he didn't save billions of lives before doing that. I mean, I know he still gotta kill himself, but still kind of a dick move. And he also somehow gives life back to Sue. What I miss? Surfer magic, I guess. So, after all that mayhem, they try once again to get married, but if there's anything masterpieces like The Legend of Zoro, Lethal Weapon 4, and Flubber have taught us, it's that rushed weddings are hilarious. No, they're not. Venice is sinking into the Adriatic. Can we just skip to the end? I now pronounce you man and wife, and you may kiss the bride. <laughs> Who the hell are these people we invited? I recognize a couple, but 80%? I have no clue. But we still have time for throwing the bouquet while Venice sinks, I guess. Heads up, Johnny. <laughs> Sorry. Reflex. He's an asshole. Oh, we also had time to make our giant four while Venice sinks. Again, good to know everyone's priorities are in the shitter. Well, I'm sorry to say, but shitter's full. Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer tries less, so I guess it offends less. It's got one or two neat things, but they're forgotten very quickly for the lame storytelling and dialogue. The film was only rated PG, so maybe the idea was they wanted to be more of a kid's film. But I think even kids would find a lot of this pretty boring because they don't do much crime fighting. It didn't really make me angry because it was coming off of an already botched film, but it certainly didn't leave much of an impact either. It's just your run-of-the-mill dumb. No more, no less. And certainly, nothing fantastic. But Critic, will the adequately impressive three ever return? <sighs> I'll admit, Malcolm, it doesn't look likely. But you never know. If a certain clever fox and a certain clever mouse can figure things out, maybe we can too. Maybe then we can have once more a symbol. Something that appeals to the best in each and every one of us. Something good? Something decent. Something pure. Or not. No. It's clobbering time.